given all of the volatility that we had seen in the market, uh, you know, weeks and weeks ago, and then the surge that we've seen, what was this process like for you getting to today? Well, we, uh, you know, when we first got the early days of uh, COVID, we were kind of evaluating. Obviously, that didn't seem to be the right time. We saw some interesting momentum in our business uh, through the later half of March and into April. And then we actually saw that uh, there was a great opportunity for us to move the business forward. So we got into testing the waters, got into the roadshow, and uh, we're obviously well received. So we're excited. We got low interest rates right now, but we've also got a, a consumer and small businesses that have been rocked with uh, economic catastrophe in a lot of places. How is that going to affect what you do with the proceeds here and how you project your business to go for the rest of the year? Well, the, the nice part about the broom business is because we've got cars for everyone, if customers need to move from one size car to maybe a lower size car because there's pressure in their in their personal finances, we're able to do that. And likewise, if if uh, if folks are doing well, they can they can move forward and and integrate and and uh, buy a product uh, from Broom at a higher level because we're buying and selling in the same cycle. We're much less susceptible to uh, major macro moves. Yeah, along those lines, Paul, I mean, what have you seen in terms of auto sales activity on the site? And what has that meant in terms of pricing, which we know has been under pressure more broadly throughout the auto industry in the midst of COVID-19? Yeah, consumers are turning to the Vroom model now more than ever, especially because of COVID, the contactless free sales, the contactless free uh, driveway experience. And so what we're, what we're seeing in terms of pricing is the market's moved down. We've now bought in that new market, and then we're able to actually pass great prices on to our customers. So we're able to move very, very quickly in an agile way to take advantage of moving market conditions. What do you think the process of buying and selling a car is going to look like longer term? How much of that is going to be online? Or in the case of a company like Vroom, do you expect that down the road you're going to have more of a brick and mortar presence as well to accompany the e-commerce platform? No, we're, we're predominantly a, a pure e-commerce play. And, and we've seen a lot of data come, coming out in the past quarter where customers are actually twice as likely now to transact online for uh, in terms of buying a used vehicle. So we believe the market is really coming our way. That creates a tailwind. And that's yet another reason why we're, we're kind of entering the public markets now. So we think it's a fundamental and structural change. And this is one of the last verticals to actually come online in terms of pure e-commerce and transactions. And it is a big market, it's massively fragmented. And now we actually think it's coming our way. So we're, we think we're well positioned now and for the future. Um, Paul, I wonder, you know, Experian had some numbers on the sort of ownership framework and how it's changing uh, with regard to cars and consumers. Um, so it's, it's less leasing. It's more loans, it seems. I wonder, why do you think that's happening? What's going through the customer's mind uh, that's resulting in some of this shift? Yeah, I mean, I think fundamentally uh, customers have, have always, uh, you know, used lending facilities to buy used cars. I think that's ticking up a little bit. But what I think is much more compelling is that many customers now are returning to thoughts of using their car because there's some question marks about mass transit and public transportation. And so I, we're actually seeing trends in the business that looks like people are favoring uh, personal use for their cars uh, now more than ever. Uh, Paul, what do you think is next to give you a competitive edge in technology? Are you focused on volume of data and somehow using artificial intelligence there to make the experience richer? Are you focused on somehow getting into the in front of the consumer more through different devices? What do you think is going to give you an edge? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely that our business is built on top of a data science model and an experimentation model. So when you combine uh, an e-commerce platform with an outstanding like world-class vehicle operations platform, and then integrate a data science platform and an experimentation platform. That's the real differentiator. And that's what allows us to actually make great decisions on behalf of customers on what we ought to buy, what we ought to pay for those cars, how can we get pricing into the customer's hands that, that allows them to save, save money. And so, yeah, data science, uh, experimentation, those are the real differentiators of the model. 